that's going to motivate you to bit by bit take each one of these hats off over time and start delegating these tasks to everyone. The next tool that we're going to make use of is something called a future organizational chart. And so this is basically going to be your map to start taking those hats off and start passing them over to other people. Now, everyone in business should have some kind of idea of what your organizational chart looks like right now. So who are the different people in the business? You want to make sure that you have some kind of map of how reporting lines flow, how decision making hierarchy works, and you want to have that documented in a way so it's really clear for everybody in your team. Again, you don't have to go crazy with this. We're not looking to create bureaucracy, but we do want to have some guidance created. But there's a little bit of magic that happens when we create an organizational chart and when we create an organizational chart that maps out the future of our business. Now, if you're in the early stages of your business, you might choose to do this like five years in the future. If you've got a more mature business, you may wish to do 10 years in the future, although it's a little bit harder to kind of like map that far ahead, but you want to do at least three to five years because when you do three to five years in the future, what you start to activate is this 10X thinking muscle in your brain, which has you start to think creatively about how you might solve the challenges that you have along the pathway to that point in the future. I'm going to redo one of mine here. Importantly, you're going to put the title and then you're going to put the person's name or potential person's name. At the start, it's possible that your title is going to be everywhere. So for now, it's okay if your name is everywhere. That's fine. Because basically what that's going to do is when you print this out and you stick it up on the wall, because that's what you're going to do when you've got it finished, is that's going to motivate you to bit by bit take each one of these hats off over time and start delegating these tasks to everyone. Now, right now, if you're less than 20 employees, you've probably got a whole bunch of hats that you're wearing. You're probably wearing the hats of three or four or five people. We found that when we were in the process over the last couple of months of starting to take some of my hats off in the marketing director position, I was wearing about three or four hats worth of roles there. Like when we actually started writing out all of the responsibilities, I had like three or four roles that I was doing. And so part of what the, I guess the dance is and the art of scaling a business is managing your resources as you bring other people on to do your work, because we do have the resource constraint of funds, typically, where we've got to manage that resource of bringing on people to do the work, but you don't always necessarily go and hire a full-time person. Like I would love to spend 350 grand a year on a Silicon Valley level growth hacker, marketing director, head of revenue, but we don't currently have the budget for that in the profitability of our business. Sure, maybe when we're a 20, 30 million dollar a year business, we can drop that kind of money on someone. But for now, we have to have what we call fractional roles. And so we need to hire someone who's a little bit more of an all rounder who can maybe do a little bit of the marketing director work, a little bit of the marketing strategy work, and then a little bit of maybe ad operations, and then a little bit of content management, and a little bit of branding. So you can see that, you know, in a large organization, you don't have six people for those roles. That's just in marketing. But bit by bit, we're basically first doing all of these ourselves. And then bit by bit, we're taking these hats off and we're starting to share the load to other people. We come to our little board here and we go, okay, well, you know what? Now's the time to hand off finance. So I'm going to give that to Regina. And now each one of the responsibilities that sit under finance now sit under the responsibility of Regina. And eventually, okay, cool. You know, maybe we get a marketing agency or a marketing consultant who's external. And they're just going to do one day a week or charge me a couple of grand a month and do some of our marketing stuff. And then, of course, if you're hiring international team members taking advantage of international arbitrage in labor markets, we obviously have a large team in the Philippines, which helps us to grow and helps us to scale. All right, great. Well, you know, maybe we can hire that video editor and have that person employed full time because it's going to cost less than what it would to hire somebody in Australia. So that's where with different labor markets, you can start to get smart as you build this out. And you might not have a CEO. Let's say you get to what we call the golden line, which is 20 employees, which is the point where you can usually have someone come in and take over operations. They may not necessarily be a CEO because the CEO is really, they're running the whole show. They're making the financial decisions. They're setting a lot of the strategy, even if you're still guiding them as a board member slash founder. They're still setting the strategy. So maybe you get to 20 employees and this person is a head of operations. You might call them that. So they're just handling absolutely everything operationally in the business delivery wise, but you're still sitting over marketing 
and you're still sitting over finance. That's a good kind of progressive step in the process of you being able to get out of the day to day, but still, I guess, managing the responsibility for the revenue growth and holding the responsibility for the final net profit number, which is probably the last KPI that you will let go of. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.